Greetings Lore Seekers and welcome to another episode of the Lost Archives, more Star Wars Legends lore. So today I'm going to be talking about the Tarkin, a super weapon commissioned after the destruction of the first Death Star and built simultaneously around the same time frame as the second Death Star. This essentially was a scaled back version of the super weapon that had its offensive capabilities and defensive capabilities but none of its weaknesses, and as such the weapon was named in honour of Willif Tarkin, the former Grand Moff, and man who met his fate on the first Death Star. So essentially it was a space station that had a pair of engines, a shield generator and a super laser. As you can see from the image here it had a very um, cylindrical sort of shape with extra supports and tributaries being put in to support its main dish and its tributary components for the main firing of the weapon. And as you can see from the design schematic here, there is a hell of a lot of aft weapons to protect the weapon from being attacked from the back. Where its main forward armament is the super laser itself, and it also was equipped with a hell of a lot of tractor beam projectors. Now, being that this was a scaled back design in terms of the principles of the Death Star, it had none of the recreational facilities that Death Star did, had no shopping malls, it essentially just had crew quarters and a few key facilities. These would include barracks for stormtroopers, which they did have a vast quantity of troops aboard, as well as barracks for gunners and TIE fighter pilots, as it did have the usual complement of TIE fighter hangars that would come with any Imperial battle station. But you have to sit there and think, so they were building the Death Star too, why would they funnel it into another Imperial super weapon project? Well, the problem was, the destruction of the first Death Star kind of left Palpatine without his doomsday weapon, so he went ahead and he ordered the second Death Star be constructed, bigger and larger and without the weaknesses of the first. At the same time as well, he had a ship classification known as the Eclipse class, that would be getting its own video, commissioned at the same time. He wanted a weapons platform that could test the weapons that the Eclipse would eventually be equipped with. And so the Tarkin was created to A, deal with any potential issues that the second Death Star might have and test bed any refinements to the original plans, B, test the principles for the Eclipse class ships. What you resulted in was the Tarkin which helped correct many of the design flaws from the first Death Star and improve a lot of the technological refinements that had happened in the interim period where technology had advanced. Essentially it did serve as a second prototype like the Death Star 1 prototype that currently was existing at the Moore installation, although that was just a frame and not a fully working battle station. The Tarkin itself was originally constructed over the planet Pakalek under the direction of Admiral Nod Warfield. Eventually it would be requisitioned by Grand Admiral Martio Batch. Basically he wanted to use the Tarkin to assist in his operation for Stygium Crystal Mining for use with his Type Phantom project. And so Eaton 2 essentially went bye bye as the Tarkin fired its massive super laser and obliterated it releasing hundreds of thousands of Stygium Crystals into space. These were preceditedly gathered up by Batch and he then went and ran off to get to work on creating a cloaking device. I will eventually cover the TIE Phantom under the super weapons playlist I'm planning to do. Um, some of you will be wondering why but uh, I'll explain that in the introduction to that playlist. Now the destruction of Alton 2 is the only recorded destruction carried out by the Tarkin. Shortly after this the Rebel Alliance did find out about its existence and sent a team of rebels to infiltrate the battle station. Though at the time Val Fader was in command of the station it was really really interesting because the entire command staff, well I say the entire the majority of the command staff, wanted to murder Darth Vader but also deal with the rebels. I do think that some of them were a bit salty about the destruction of the first Death Star and held Vader responsible. Now the rebel saboteurs eventually drawing on the wiring diagrams of the first Death Star were able to rewire the Tarkin super laser in order to fire on itself. 
so that it would cause the weapon to discharge on itself instead of on its target out of space. Meaning that the next time they fire the super laser, it essentially means it's going to self destruct. To which eventually that did happen as the rebels were trying to escape and Darth Vader was giving pursuit. And then the rebels managed to disable Darth Vader's tie, leaving it dead in the water. Vader, of course, was trying to affect repairs, and you know, the Imperial Commanders fought. <laughs> Excellent, we've got the dirty rebels and Lord Vader in our sights. Fire! Click. And then a kawoosh happened that they weren't expecting, as they were all instantly vaporised. Vader, once again, survived destruction. I get a feeling that Palpatine's like, oh, I mean, you're really lucky in the forces protecting you, or something fishy's going on here. Because there seems to be a notable amount of times that, after a super weapon project goes up in smoke, Vader seems to survive it and be flying off in a TIE fighter. To be fair, Vader was not a big fan of super weapons, and, well, as soon as you know, stuff hits the fan, he's out, he's gone. But anyway guys, this has been my video on the Tarkin. If you like what you heard, perhaps consider leaving a comment down below, let me get discussion going. Perhaps leave a like if you enjoyed this video. I would greatly appreciate if you shared it around as well, and if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button as we can continue to help the channel grow. As always, my sources will be listed in the description below. Take care, Lawseekers, and have a good day.